There are times in my life where I'm like, I need to eat a kale salad for dinner. What do I pass on the way home? Every Taco Bell, every Del Taco, every Chick-fil-A, every Pizza Hut, every Papa John's. And I know for a fact that I'm supposed to be eating my kale with my grilled chicken for three days straight, but no, what do I pass? Good morning, good morning, good, 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 good morning. Nachos and cheese are so good. I'm, are we related? Good night and good welcome to the Jamie Grace Show. I'm your host, Jamie Grace. Also today, I'm kind of a raccoon. And I'm so glad that you guys have joined me here for the Jamie Gray Show. I also want to say thank you because this was actually a gift. I am so grateful when you guys like send me stuff in the mail and or when you bring it to shows. That's the coolest thing in the entire world. And this um, raccoon onesie was a gift. So thank you so much. I am very uh, thankful and grateful and I think it's such a a cool onesie. Also, I want to say thank you to you guys. Mm, sorry. Thank you to you guys who are watching the Jamie Gray show because you could be at home like, well, yeah, you're probably at home, but you should be like in the bed getting ready for school tomorrow or work tomorrow. Or maybe you have a toe massage in the morning. I have no idea what you guys are up to. All I know is that you're spending time hanging out with me and I cannot be more grateful. So thank you guys for that. Typical evenings and typical homes begin with a bedtime story and I have got one loaded for you tonight. So cue music. Okay, so um, tonight's story is actually not really like a, you know, point A, then point B, then this happened, then that happened. It's more of just a compilation of embarrassing things that happened throughout my entire childhood, but it's like a consistent thing that always happened. I did not know how to smile until like five minutes ago. And by five minutes ago, I mean a few years, but you get the gist. Like, have you ever looked back at childhood photos or pictures when you were a kid and you've like been really embarrassed about like what you were wearing or how you were looking? That's how I am with how I smiled. It's so awkward. Even now, I'll see certain pictures of myself and I'm like, or I'm like, no, just kidding. But legit, I'll think I'm being really cute and I'll like lean my head the wrong way. So I'll be like, or I'll like pose weird and I'm like, or sometimes with you guys, I'll take pictures and you guys are like way cooler than me sometimes. And you guys will be like, okay, girls, are you ready? And I'm standing there like, is anybody else that friend that you're just always the awkward one or you didn't get the memo that y'all were supposed to be cute for that shot? In case that is you, in case you've ever been embarrassed when you've ever gone through a photo, I'm just choosing to be vulnerable and open and honest and share my embarrassing photos and my humiliation from my childhood with you guys, okay? Here we go. Now this photo is when I was a pretty small baby. And I don't think it's so much like, oh, I'm a really bad, like, poser for photos or anything. I think it's more so of like, oh, maybe she does have ADHD. Like we probably could have seen the signs very early. And I get it, all babies like look away, all babies get distracted. But the awkwardness in this photo continued throughout my childhood. So I don't think we can just say she was just being a baby. No y'all, I was being, I was being gray. All right, so this photo is, it's so bad. This is when my mom's parents, my granny and granddaddy, renewed their vows. Beautiful service. You would think that everyone there is there to celebrate and make this a memorable evening. Everyone's just smiling and laughing and congratulating and celebrating. And I am choosing to stand there like a little bitty tiny leprechaun in a red dress. Look, that's a white dress. I'm just choosing to stand there like a little bitty tiny leprechaun in a white dress going, I think it's such an awkward photo. I do not, I don't understand. Like, not everybody has teeth and I get that, but like I have teeth and I'm just not sure why I didn't just choose to go, just show my teeth. This is from my birthday. Um, I think this was 1996, it says at the bottom. So I must've been turning five. I feel like I look like a giant five. Anyways, I'm not sure what's up with this pose. I think it was like a dress up party and it's possible that my mom said something like, hey, like look like you're, you know, playing dress up and everyone's default pose is, okay, 
You know, like who poses like that? Like why in the world would I make that face? Why would I be so creepy? I don't know. Just the story of my life, you guys. You thought I was cool, maybe you did. Well, now you know I'm not. You already didn't think I was cool. Here's the proof. This was my first day of school. Now, I will say, this was a really difficult day for me. It was amazing and overwhelming and amazing and overwhelming. I was homeschooled my entire life, but in third grade, I got to go to a really small private Christian school. My mom taught second grade there and my sister was in fifth grade. Now, Morgan and I were not able to go for the entire semester. I think we only went for um, a few months, but I do remember like not like just being overwhelmed with emotions. Like I never walked into an actual school and sat down at like six or seven or eight in the morning. Like I just wasn't used to that at all. Like that was, it was new to me, it was foreign to me. And so I was sitting there and I just remember that I was tired and I was excited to meet all my classmates. I was there early because my mom was a teacher. So my classmates weren't there yet. And I just remember being like overwhelmed because school sounds scary, but excited because school sounds amazing and happy to be in this new school, but not wanting to be too happy because I didn't want my mom to think that I wasn't happy to have been homeschooled. And she said to pose for a photo and I just thought, okay, how can I just put all of my emotions and confusions and feelings into one reaction? And then I did this. So as you can see, I'm not really good at dealing with my emotions, or at least I wasn't. I'm great at it now. I'm really good at my emotions, huh? But yeah, that was just super awkward. The thing is, you guys, I've noticed with most of my friends, like I'm gonna call them out. When I see their baby photos, they're either like super awkward in elementary school or super awkward in middle school or super awkward in high school. We all have an awkward phase. Just get over it. It happens to all of us. But I had this thing where I like kept being awkward through middle school. And this is just one photo of that. Like, I'm not sure what is up with this photo. It's like, oh, why am I leaning this way? And look at my, the way my head is tilted here. Y'all, here's the situation. I remember this photo shoot specifically. My little cousin Brooklyn and I, we were sitting in the van while my mom was inside in the flea market and we were waiting for her <laughs> to come out. We were sitting there and we didn't have seats in the back. So when my mom went inside, we are like, ooh, let's unbuckle our seat belts and let's sit in the back. I don't know why it's so fun to like sit where there are no seats, but me and Brooke, we were just hanging out and stuff. And I, it's just, yeah, I'm just, oh. And I was like, let's take pictures, Brooke. I had just gotten a camera. I was like 13 or 14. So I thought I was just the coolest thing that there ever was. So I was like, oh, we're photographers. Look at us, we're doing a photo shoot. And Brooke was like, let me take a picture of you. And I was like, okay, let me just lean on this lunchbox really quick. Cause that'll be cute. Long story short, if you're ever hanging out in a van and you want to do a photo shoot, leaning on the lunchbox is not the way to go. Just don't even worry about the van. Just hop out the car, like stand in front of the plain brick wall. Like, have you learned nothing, Jamie Grace? Clearly I hadn't learned a thing and I embarrassed myself like crazy and I figured I could share that embarrassment with you guys. If you have any embarrassing photos, I would absolutely love to see them. Please share them on Instagram or Twitter and hashtag the Jamie Grace Show. Maybe I will include them in a future episode. That would be so super cool and so super awesome. But but for now, we have a great show planned for you guys tonight, and I cannot wait for you guys to see it. We've got some music and some fun stuff. We've got a lullaby. Also, that's music. We've got some games and a sketch and a bunch of really, really, really cool stuff. So go grab a snack. Go put on your onesie. This is The Jamie Gray Show. This is The Jamie Gray Show. God has really put it on my heart to save myself from marriage, but there is a boy at school who really likes me. He's cool, and I told him my personal views on dating. He is a Christian, but I don't think God wants me to have a relationship this young. I have made past mistakes before God saved me, and I really just want to focus on Him. This has been going on for a year now, and I don't know what God wants me to do about it. Please pray for me. Alex, 15. Okay, Alex, you answered your own question. I, there's a certain sentence that she said in there. It was, I don't think God wants me to date this young. Alex, you answered your own question, honey. I think... I think <laughs> I think this boy is really cute and you're stressing out and you're just like, oh my gosh, but I could have a boyfriend right now. But I think deep down in your heart, you don't think that it's good timing because of where your heart's already been and because of where your heart is right now. So <laughs> you got your own answer, honey. I it's it's hard. I get it. Like there are times in life where we know that we're supposed to be waiting on something. And this is not even like a dating thing. But there are times in our lives where we know that we're supposed to be like waiting on something or we know that we're supposed to be 
you know, just in a certain place in our lives. And then temptation comes. You know what? I'm going to hit y'all with a good example. There are times in my life where I'm like, I need to eat a kale salad for dinner. What do I pass on the way home? Every Taco Bell, every Del Taco, every Chick-fil-A, every Pizza Hut, every Papa John's. And I know for a fact that I'm supposed to be eating my kale with my grilled chicken for three days straight. But no, what do I pass? Again, every Del Taco, every Taco Bell, every Chick-fil-A, every Pizza Hut, every single place that could be the total opposite of a kale salad. There are times in life where we know for a fact where we're supposed to be. We know for a fact what's supposed to be going on. And then something real cute and something real fancy shows up and we're like, but let me just ask Demi Grace real quick, girl. You know your answer already. And also, if you are saying, and I'm assuming by save yourself from marriage, I think you're talking about that. I know we got some young ones watching, so you don't know what I'm talking about. I think that if you know that you want to save yourself for that, save your save yourself for marriage for that. Y'all, I'm so single and awkward. If you know that you are so stop laughing at me. If you know that you're supposed to save, that you want to save your body until you are a married person and someone comes into your life that is like they're already causing you to think about I don't know if you know where I'm going with this, but I just feel like this is like a train wreck waiting to happen and we can avoid it by you reading your question back to yourself and understanding that you already know in your heart that because of where you've been and where you are right now, you know that you're too young. Um, that is, this is dating and relationships. There's no rule book. There's no, I mean, we've got a great book of wisdom with some ideas and some suggestions and some, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Commandments and things like that. Um, 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 ADHD, hitting hard, what, what? Oh yeah, there's no like formula. You know, I'm not, there's no cookie cutter answer for every single person. But you know in your heart what your convictions are. You know in your heart who you were called to be. And I always suggest just gathering amazing people in your life that will hold you accountable for who you're called to be. Um, so that when temptation comes, that you will not stop at every Taco Bell on the way home, that you will not stop at every Del Taco on the way home, but you'll go home and you eat your kale salad because you already know that you've made a commitment because of your conviction. And that was the end of my sentence, but I ended it weird. as like commitment, conviction, commitment because of your conviction. <laughs> yep, that's it. Okay, <laughs> okay, bye. This is the Jamie Gray Show. Hey guys, it's Jamie Grace. And <laughs> hey guys, it's Jamie Grace and I'm here with Stella and, and Blizz, and we are playing Watch Your Mouth. I'm so excited. Thank you, Watch Your Mouth, for this amazing game. We are going to play this challenge, this game. We're going to have to put these mouth guards in our mouth and try to say a phrase, and then the other people have to try to guess what it says. Also, I've never put this in my mouth before. How do you even? I look really cute, I think. I look cute. Look at Stella. So I'm gonna read this. Okay, you ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh, guys. <laughs> purple? Yeah. Okay. No, say the Oh, okay. Purple pixie dot. <laughs> purple pixie dot. What? Yeah. Is that that? That is her. I chose purple because that's her favorite color. Is it that uh, your favorite color? He ha ha yeah. Purple blue pink. No, he ha ha. Oh. Cheese purple? Yes, yeah, yeah. Cheese purple? Yeah, cheese purple. Cheese? Pass the letter. Cheese? Pass the letter. Cheese? Pass the letter. Cheese? Please? Pass the letter. Yes! Okay, no. Please pass the butter. Yes! We got it. I don't know how to read it. I don't think I can. You can do it. No, but no, Jamie Grace. Her mom can tell you. She's telling him what his is now. Okay. A okay. slobbery snotter. A slobbery snotter? <laughs> slobbery snotter. A solo, solo. <laughs> Slyer. Slyer. No, it's slob. Like slobber? Slobber. Yeah? Okay. Slobber? Okay, say it again. Uh, I heard that. A slobbery slider? Mm -hmm. A slobbery spider. Slider. Slider. Slider? Uh-uh. Slider. A slobbery smile. Oh, a slobbery smile. You guys are so close. That was, yeah, that was a hard one. 
Separated at birth. Oh, my, are me and Stella twins? Part two of Celebrity Connected. Gifting suite for the Oscars. So much fun and I missed you guys. I hope you guys watched last week because I showed you guys some amazing products that I got and this is the rest of it. This bracelet, it's so cool. It's made by the Freeman Jewelry Collection. This is from the Real Man Company. Now here's the thing, you guys. This is beard balm. Um, so I'm in need. <laughs> Either get married or my dad like is gonna need to like grow out his beard. So they've got beard soap and beard oil and a beard balm. This is the photo that we took. Isn't it so great? I'm holding a sign that says I love beards. This product. This isn't one of those things where they're like pretend to like this. None of this stuff is actually I only ever walk up to stuff that I know I'm gonna love. If you love to cook but you hate to clean up, this is for you. It's like a, like a really thin sheet of film and you put it on your skillet, in your baking pan, in your bread baking tin, whatever you're cooking, you put it there. You don't have to use butter, you don't have to use oil, and you just cook on top of that. So instead of having to clean the skillet and scrape the skillet, you just have to clean these. It's such a genius concept. This is from Rico's. Not only did they give you a shirt, not only did they give you this back clip, not only did they give you nachos on the go. Your nachos and cheese are so good. Ah! Make sure you go to Rico's if you're looking for nachos and cheese. <laughs> it's Dome Beauty. I'm not a, a, a beauty guru or a pro by any stretch of the imagination, yeah? But I do love a good like deep, oh this looks so good, a deep colored eyeshadow. Look at this color. Can we just look at that? Oh, I cannot wait to wear that. Would you just look at it? Okay, always the homies are there with the best hand sanitizer ever. You got to get this stuff. It's so good. I actually keep it on my backpack. This stuff, it's not sticky. It's not weird. It doesn't smell like a chemical plant. It's a very, it's all natural hand sanitizer and I, I love it so much. Okay, and this is a new fast acting fat burner that helps when you're working out. I haven't gotten to try it up yet, but I've been thinking about getting into kickboxing. And for all my friends in Australia, you've got to go and check out the TikTok track. They make watches for kids and their parents can track the kids via the watch via a free app on iPhone or Android. And it's an incredible way to keep up with your kids, make sure your kids are safe. Up next we've got these amazing tasty treats. So these are, what is it, what are these things? Handmade little round candy things. Actually had a couple bites of the chocolate one, again, if you know me, then you know I'm not really into sugar or chocolate, but I had a couple bites of it and I actually liked it. It was really good. Okay guys, and I get really hyped when I see people my age like doing awesome stuff. And I believe this girl was about my age. Her name is Erica and this is her company and they make these soaps. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. It's like an all natural vegan body soap. I cannot wait to try it. I feel like I'm gonna smell and feel and look like a majillion books. All right, and last but not least, I'm not saying that I saved the best for last because all of these companies are amazing. But this was by far one of my favorite ones. Also, I don't know how to open the box. You guys are gonna lose your minds when you see what's in this box. I'm so excited. Dear Lord, send me children. I just wanna be a mom. This boot is like the cutest, and there's two, so it's even better. Oh my goodness. They're also from Australia, and they make amazing Western boots that you can also get here in America. So if you need boots for your cute little tiny human, I mean, you can buy white boots from jamierace.com and you can get Western boots from their website. I had so much fun hanging out with Celebrity Connected um, with the Oscars and it was so, so cool and I got to meet some amazing people and I love that living in it. Like, I just had, I just, I, mean, I had so much fun. So make sure you follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, any of that stuff and you can always see and all this stuff like before it's even on YouTube because I Snapchat a lot, I snap a lot and I Instagram stories a lot, but yeah, make sure you follow me on social media at Jamie Grace H um, to see all the latest stuff and, and I'll see you, I'll see y'all as I have, I don't know what to say. Bye. <laughs> hey guys, it's Jamie Grace. I'm here at Kappa Studios. Burbank, California, entertainment capital of the world. I'm hanging out with this dude named Brad Silverman. Word up. 
He's so cool. Yep. I met this dude like 30 years ago right. when he directed a movie called Grace Unplugged. That's right. That I played in the movie in it called Rachel. I was. And now he is casting for a new movie and it's called Selfie Dad. And I'm so excited. So excited that I literally came and crashed the casting process. So I just want you guys to see what the casting process looks like when you're casting for like a major movie. This is so exciting. Are you so excited, Brad? I am. This is fun. I love the casting process. It's one of my favorite parts of the entire, because I, I also write the scripts that I do mostly. I'm like, you know, holed up in a room all by myself. I'm talking to myself. I'm playing all the parts. I get it on the page. At the auditions, that's the first time I actually hear the words said by someone else. We're neck deep in casting Selfie Dad. We've looked at characters for about, I want to say about five different parts. We've already cast the lead. And that's comedian Michael Jr. You can look him up. Oh, that's public now? It's totally public. I'm so excited. Yeah. You guys, I've like almost, I almost spoiled it when I was doing the intro and then I was yeah. like, I don't want to get in trouble. I'm so excited. I've done shows with Michael Jr. He's so funny. He's so great. And I'm so pumped for this movie. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled program. Listen, Bob, Bobby, 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 shh. wait, Bobby, Bobby. The answer is no. It was no and it remains no. Okay? De Niro is such a punk. I just want to say that. Okay. <laughs> that so lame. Every director is going to have their own process, right? For me, I like to spend a little bit of time with the people. I want to see who they are when they're not acting. This is just, this is part of the script called The Sides. S-I-D-E-S. I have no idea where that name came from. <laughs> Look it up. I'm sure it's some movie lore from 100 years ago. This is for a character, Lori. So I picked about two or three scenes that the character Lori's in, and she will come in and just do those scenes. I'm just looking for, in a word, I'm looking for honesty and believability, right? So when they're reading, I'm just saying, do I believe what they're telling me? Bobby, if you call me one more time here. You see how he's on the phone, guys? Yeah. You see guys, the background of his no, phone? Pacino, the phone. Pacino took the part. Deal with it. With, 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 with it. Right. Marty. Scorsese. He has noticed that all of his actor references yeah. are at least 50 years old. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Do you know any actors <laughs> under the age of 50? Um, come on, one actor under one the age of 50. Okay, one actor the, under the age of 50. One, just one. Jamie Grace. Does that count? That does not count. Okay. Um, um, I, want, I know a lot. I mean, where do you want me to... <laughs> the guy from... Um... Are you like? Are you being sarcastic? You really... <laughs> <That's not. laughs> Wait, like I'm thinking of as like a superstar. Okay, uh, okay, the, the Ryan Reynolds. Uh, Good job. That's oh. the first person I was thinking of. Who's well, married who wouldn't? to? Who wouldn't? Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, he's married uh, Blake to... Blake Lively. <gasps> you know two famous actors. Thank you so much for letting us crash the studio today. And we're going to come back throughout the whole process of we Selfie Dad. We're going to come back. Jimmy Gray Show is going to continue to crash Selfie Dad and figure out like how do you make a movie after you've cast all the people? What is a set like? How long is a set day? What kind of food do you get on set? Mostly this is just selfishness because I want to hear what is happening, y'all. Cool. See ya. This week on The Jamie Gray Show, we have an all-new segment called One of a Kind. It's where I feature something that is one of a kind that I absolutely love. Well, last week you may have seen part one of the gifting suite haul from Celebrity Connected's Oscars gifting suite, and I got this amazing book called Hello Gorgeous, and I want to feature this as one of a kind. This book really helps women feel like their most beautiful selves as they are going through their cancer treatments, and I want to gift this book to someone that really, really, truly needs it. Now, now, I think it's going to be really hard um, to figure out who we're going to give this to because there are so many amazing stories and my team and I, I promise we're going to do our best to make sure that we are able to encourage someone and gift them and bless them with this book. All you have to do to submit someone or submit yourself is post a picture or a video um, on Instagram and just make sure you use the hashtag the Jamie Gray Show in the description, but share why you think that they should receive this book, Hello Gorgeous, and why you think this book could be encouraging to them while they're on this journey. You can submit yourself, you can submit your best friend, your aunt, your mom, your daughter, whoever you think may benefit from this. And make sure you look in the description box below so that you can learn more about Hello Gorgeous and how they are truly inspiring women all around the world. Humpty 
Dumpty he sat on the wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great falling and all the king's horses, all the king's men, all the king's horses and all the king's men. Ooh, 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 and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, but all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again, again, together again, oh, together again, no, oh, no, together again, no, oh, no. together again, no, oh, no, together again, no, oh, together again, no, oh, together again, no. Together again, no. Oh, oh. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode of The Jamie Gray Show. You're absolutely amazing, and I'm so grateful that you joined me, and I'm so grateful that we could hang out tonight. Leave a comment, or you can like it with a thumbs up, and if you didn't like it, don't even worry about the thumbs down button. It does not work very well, so don't even try it because it's out of order. Click right here to subscribe, or you click right here to watch one of my other videos, or you can click right here to subscribe or click right here to watch one of my other videos. I can't really remember which one it is, but I hope you liked what you saw. Thank you guys so much for watching The Jamie Gray Show. I love you guys so much. I will see you soon. Ugh, I miss you already. Bye.